Find a way to power the station rotation engine in the Ares wing. That's what we've been trying to do right now because we want to get the elevator working again. And now we found it. We got to get power to it. Okay. Well, I see a little power thing here. Would we have to move it somewhere? There's two here. Yeah, there's still not enough power right now. But if we can figure this out, then probably we can get more power going. So what would I want to do here then? Would I want to take this one out? But that would turn off all the computers, right? I feel like that's not a good thing either. Did something just turn off? Hmm. Oh, the door shut off. Doesn't open now. Would that work? I've diverted power away from this thing to the rotation engines. Does it need six in total? Hmm. Huh. Well, this door's not opening either, so... What did that actually do? Yeah, there's more power to the rotation engine now, but even the... But the station power is still very low. It doesn't actually let me interact anymore, so we must have done the right thing here. Hmm. Ah. Oh, you want me to cut all of them? I mean, I guess so. And then at the very end there, there is yet another power thingy. Okay. So there's an implication here that if I do this, then the moment we take out the last energy thing, we're gonna be out of oxygen. Something to be very careful about. Ooh, okay, that's not good. I don't think we want to walk through that, right? So can I... Mm. <laughs> Can I try throwing a computer in there? I don't know. Don't think walking in that would be a good idea, but there's no... There's nothing I can... Cut off here. Just don't touch it. Ah! I'm not sure how many hits of that I can take. I'm gonna recover my battery a little bit, just in case if pulling this off takes away all the oxygen. Here it goes. One more. We're gonna have to do a mad dash after this one. So now we have both of these being a problem.
Okay. Now we gotta do the usual. And this time, we have to be careful about having to get a move on too. Ooh, ooh, not good, not good. Slowly. Hmm. How ominous. Okay. Ready? Life support, energy supply, critical. We still have oxygen for now. Power fully redirected from life support to rotation engine. Access control center to activate engine. Life support failing. Right. Yeah, I think they want to go for a more realistic portrayal here, where you don't immediately start running out of oxygen the moment you divert the power. Life support shutting down. Oxygen reserves low. But eventually, if we dawdle for too long, then definitely the oxygen is going to be a problem. Okay, we're back here. Now the control panel would be in the center here. No? In the control center, in the Libra wing. Libra, all the way over here. Usually hearing these alarm sounds would make everyone panic. Life support offline. Oxygen reserves nearly exhausted. But it's just us here now. Oh, yeah, we gotta get back here. Yes. Okay, rotation engine activated. I don't think that's what we meant to happen. Oh my god. Oh no! Come on, buddy. Square one! Oh dear. Give me! Okay, we got like 25. Um. Oh! We're trying to swim back over there right now. But we have a very limited bit of oxygen. I see. I don't even know where the next one is. Here? Wow, so much for fixing the freaking elevator. I feel like we could almost just fly to the moon here. Oh. Where's the next one? I feel like I'm starting to go really, really fast. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Because we're in space right now. So we're not going to be able to stop if we can't hold on to anything. Come on. Good. What happened? We started the rotation engine, but then... It must have been broken. Oh no! What? Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. What was that? No! Can I get back in? Thank you. Where do we even want to go? 
I'm headed in the general direction here, but the specifics... Oh. Wow, that was real sneaky of them. <laughs> you saw a whole bunch of air canisters in the distance. You thought you'd be good. Do I want to go in? Maybe not now? I don't think that's our goal. How about there? That was somebody's room though. You saw pictures. Yeah, come on, come on. A little bit more. Oh! Hull breach. Get in the elevator. Oh! Whoa! Whoa. Oh, the thing broke. But the good thing is, the elevator works. <laughs> that was pretty intense. What are we gonna do on the way back though? It's gonna be a big problem. Are we even gonna be able to get back? That's not actually guaranteed either. Okay, they like to switch between third person and first person, huh? Interesting. Go to the MPT control center. Retrieve an ASC unit to gain access to the MPT control center. Hmm, we're still following the footsteps of all the engineers that came before us. Yeah, okay. You can open the doors at least. Pearson Space Elevator The Pearson Space Elevator improved the logistics of getting people and supplies to and from the moon. When the 2054 blackout occurred, station crew members Sarah Baker and Wolf Robertson were sent down the elevator to investigate the blackout on the moon's surface. Due to the station's emergency protocol, their time was extremely limited. Naturally, right now, we have no clue where they are. Yeah, we went around one big circle here. Okay. The Copernicus Moon Hub. In complete disarray. But so far, we haven't seen a single body. So I think that's a good sign too, or at least I hope it's a good sign. Stairs. I need to get an ASE. Hello? Hello? It seems empty. Where is everyone? I have no idea. I've never seen the base like this. Is Alex getting any heat signatures? No, nothing. This can't be right. I'll go downstairs, see what I can find. Sarah, we'll figure this one out. And thank you, both of you, for saving me when the blackout hit. I know I, uh... Expedition team, you must be at the surface by now. Remember, you only have 40 minutes down there. Copy that, Pearson. Don't mention it, Rolf. 
Can you check out the control center and see what's wrong with the MBT? Will do. Keep your comms on. I'll update you when I find something. When they got here two days after the blackout, everyone was already gone. No bodies, nothing. As Sarah and Rolf arrive in Copernicus Moon Hub to investigate the MBT blackout, it appears that the heart of the WSA's operations on the moon has been completely abandoned, recorded two days after the blackout. They had a 40-minute limit, but I'm hoping we don't. Council. Oh! Isaac Johansson's room. Lead Lunar Engineering. Claire might want to know about this. Kathy! Yeah, this must be Kathy's stuff. She was staying with her dad. But I wonder how much time he could really devote to her. Priscilla Flowers. Five lessons to make you a perfect parent. Oh, it's the same as the one down on Earth. Hmm. Everyone's depressed here. It's a lot of stress. It's stressful enough trying to keep the lights on in the place, but having to take care of a kid on top of that. I really don't know why the courts made Kathy come here. Kathy's place. Isaac was devastated when he learned of his wife's death in a dust storm on Earth in 2049. Unwilling to keep his daughters exposed to Earth's worsening conditions, he summoned them to join him on the moon. Oh! Claire refused out of concern over Kathy's health and looked after her sister until Isaac exerted his influence to gain legal guardianship over Kathy. Kathy was brought to the moon soon after. Oh, I guess that makes sense too, because Earth really was dying. But then Claire staying on Earth by herself. Mm. Well, it's probably because she didn't want to come here. If they all came here together, then that might have been a little bit better. Oh. Holograms? William MacArthur. Security and Transport Supervision. This is the guy that was diverting resources away. World Secret Service. This is to certify that Chief Operations Director W. MacArthur was honorably discharged from the World Secret Service. World Secret Service? What the heck is that? Hmm. Huh. September 23rd. MacArthur. Brief update. The evacuees from Tombow are settled in. MacArthur. The bedlam at Tombow can never happen again. I'll have no part in that. Isaac Johansson, Lunar Council. Isaac. Good. Then we can begin soon. Time for them to make a decision. Remember that no leap forward has ever come without a sacrifice, Isaac. Survival comes at a cost. Soon, the events at Tombow will just be a faint memory. Time to leave this all behind. MacArthur. Whoa, this sounds really sinister. Tombow was the power plant, right? <sighs> what do they do here? That's beginning to sound like whatever happened here was caused by man. Not aliens. No. Another one? Rosa Lavert, Lead Lunar Research Division. Whoa. Fancy giant computer. Tombow reactor plus MPT going to Pearson, going to Earth. Fusion energy equations. October 30th, 2028, quite a while ago. WSA recruits top scientists to Lunar Council. In preparation of its impending mission to colonize the moon, the WSA has filled the ranks of the Lunar Council. Established to coordinate WSA efforts on the moon, 
two seats remain unfulfilled until top scientists Dr. Rosa Laverde and Dr. Isaac Johansson were awarded the position. Laverde and Johansson were chosen personally by William MacArthur, who has a lifelong history in overseeing complex international security missions across the globe and was recently appointed mission commander to the Lunar Expedition. As head of the Lunar Council, MacArthur is to lead the colony together with Laverde and Johansson. To many, the appointment of Dr. Lavert comes as no surprise. The respected scientist has spearheaded numerous cutting-edge research teams and is a leading expert in the fields of fusion energy development and helium-3, the resource that WSA plans to harvest on the moon on a massive scale in order to fuel the MPT. Operating on the borders between architecture and technical design, Dr. Johansson is renowned for the eponymous Johansson Settlements. The settlements, designed to withstand the harsh conditions of the equatorial desert, have given Johansson unique insight into construction in physically hostile environments. It is believed that their joint knowledge and experience will prove vital to the colonization of the moon and the establishment of the MPT, the vast network meant to generate and transmit energy from the moon to Earth. Backside. How hopeful we were. Yeah, because this was before the whole MPT thing was built, and they were hoping that this would solve all their problems. I wonder if they weren't happy enough with the MPT, so they decided to make something even better, but then the better thing is what messed everything up. Objective, MPT, 100% Earth coverage. Did they ever achieve that? Hey, that's the same picture in Maria's room. The people of the Huygens facility. Where do I get an ASC? Well, there's no corpses floating on the surface here. Speech. Crossroads. Tombow. Earth. The best and brightest. The new age. Outward. Speech by somebody on the Lunar Council. Tombow. That word has come up again and again. More council people? William MacArthur does not open. Connecting moon with man to protect and prosper. Isaac Johansson? How come everybody has two rooms? Were these like the old rooms? Ah. Laverde's room. Everyone has an ESE. Ah. Mmm. These are the holograms associated with this ASE. William, what the hell was that speech about? Our uh, next chapter, Rosa. It's time. The ships will be ready soon. You can't be serious. I don't know how you plan to fix this mess, but you'd better do it now. That won't be necessary. Come with me. You are serious. Will, have you lost your mind? We can't leave the colony behind like this, not during this blackout. Not with the MPT signal still offline. People on Earth depend on us. Don't concern yourself with them. Those days are over. We have to start the long journey ahead. That was the agreement. The ships were supposed to be our last resort. We didn't give up the first time, and we are not giving up now. When the network is back online, we can provide Earth with power again. We are close, William. No, we're not. We're not close at all. If you still think we can power the entirety of Earth with the MPT, you're more delusional than I thought. We have one last hope, and it's outward. 
Now get ready, because we're going. I'm not leaving, Will. Not like this. I'm not asking. Get her on the ship. What? Ah! Uh, is this really... <sighs> oh my god. It sounds like we had three people on the Lunar Council here, but the only one who is responsible for this, the initial part anyway, was MacArthur. Yeah, MacArthur wanted to do something, and both Johansson and Laverde weren't happy with it. Mm, it sounded like MacArthur had a plan where he said outward, so do they want to go live on a different planet and just ditch everybody on Earth because they're a lost cause? Kind of sounds like it. Oh. Gotta take the little guy with us. It's broken though. I think they want me to go fix it. Did Laverde leave anything else here? She was basically kidnapped and look at that. The couch flipped over. Remember MacArthur was the one diverting the shipments too, so whatever they were building on the moon here. Damage Diagnostic Tom Bow Fusion Reactor. Restricted Information. Council. Locked. Where is the maintenance area? That is... I don't know. MacArthur wanting to leave everybody on Earth because there's no point in trying to save us. To somebody on Earth, that's definitely an evil thing to do. But if he's really thinking about the species as a whole, then... Uh, well, whether or not he's justified depends on what kind of results he can get, really. If everybody on Earth ends up dying, but humanity can get a new start somewhere else, then... Hundreds of thousands of years later on, People will be praising MacArthur for making such a decisive decision. If in the end, we discover what this is all about, maybe we'll have to make a decision too. Do we want to abandon everybody on Earth in favor of a supposed better future? Or what? I have one, but it's broken. Oh, you've got to be joking me. <laughs> This door didn't open because I didn't walk close enough. Dang. Okay. What's that side? Doesn't open. Okay. Maintenance. Nobody here, as usual. Place ASE in repair dock. There's one here. One of the three components necessary to make the network access port work. I took off the plate, but I need two more. Let's look around. ASE, keeping memories safe. How to play back your recorded memories. Return to the location of recording. Activate any authorized ASE unit. Watch your memory come to life. This reminds me a lot of the mechanic in Tacoma. Another space game with holograms. 
Whoa. Anything here? Not that I can see for now. Okay. MPT Emitter, Receiver, by Isaac Johansson. Where are we right now? Copernicus Moon Hub. We're in the maintenance area, that's right. Okay. That is fine. Gotta find the little components. So I can fix my thing. Hmm. Again, one of these suits are gone. Did somebody walk outside? ASD repair in progress. I need two more. Oh, that's another one. And then one more. Isaac Johansson's room again. There might be more inside, but we can't go in right now. High voltage. Hazard. Hey, we already looked around here, right? Where's the last little bit? Yeah, we need to put the network parts on the table, but I don't think we can do that without the third one. It's gotta be around here somewhere. There. Perfect. Whoa. Maybe we need those parts for the next step. Okay. Put the parts on the table. And then replace the parts. Oh! You want me to do it? Okay. Like this? <laughs> Did we have a blueprint somewhere? Oh, do I follow the print there? Yeah, I think so. Like this. There we go. What about this one? Well, it's gotta fit with the one underneath it. At the minimum. Oh. Hold on. Like this? Because there's a little notch there. Yeah. And then... Put the lid back on. AZ network access port replacement successful. AZ connection to moon hub facility network established. Proceeding with AZ hardware diagnostic. AZ thruster status defective. Full thruster replacement is advised. Bunch of little circles. Did the door just open up? I think so. Maybe I can find what I need in here. High voltage stuff. Young Claire Johansson claims WSA competition trophy. 2052. In the stunning conclusion to a neck-to-neck -neck race, undergrad student Claire Johansson, daughter to Lunar Council member Isaac Johansson, has claimed first prize in the WSA's prestigious Our Future competition. An initiative of the WSA, the biannual competition is the largest of its kind and stimulates innovation of space travel and sustainable development technologies. Head WSA scientist and Lunar Council member Rosa Lavert heads the jury herself. Claire Johansson's entry testifies of brilliance rarely seen at her age, commented Dr. Lavert on Johansson's design. 
The efficiency and durability of her rocket's design is exceptional and stands out from the rest. As part of her prize, Clara Johansson has received an open invitation to join Dr. Rosa Laverde's research team on the moon. But in a remarkable turn of events, young Johansson has expressed no interest in joining. Unprecedented, Dr. Laverde remarked. Mmm, because it's basically her trying to make a statement, and her relationship with her father is probably not very good right now. Isaac seems to want to focus on developing the moon for the future, whereas Claire is still intent on saving Earth. And that's obviously a drawing from Kathy. ASC, Rosa, Teddy, me, Daddy, Mommy's in the heavens, and Claire's still on Earth. For Daddy, from Kathy and Teddy. I feel like it's not so good for Kathy to be here, though, even if it might be the future. I doubt there's kids around her age here. June 11th, 2054. Hi, Isaac. I know you're busy, but could you install a new module to my ASC soon? Lead engineer Sarah Baker from Pearson Space Station has designed an additional emotion module that seems fascinating. It'll mean the world to Kathy, too. Hi, Rosa. I apologize, but pressing matters at Tombow require my full attention for the next few months. Besides, you know how dearly Kathy wants an ASC of her own. She hasn't stopped asking for one ever since you showed her yours. How are her growth results? Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Of course, our duties come first. As for Kathy, I need to be honest with you. The test results are in, and she's not at all growing like a girl her age should. I worry for her health, Isaac. Maybe she was better off on Earth after all. Please, at least consider the program. Rosa, you know that she'd be no better off on Earth than here. I'll think about the program. Thank you. You mean a lot to her. Yeah, not even socially, but... Physically, Kathy's not really developing so well. That's not good. I don't want to touch any of this, right? I feel like things are gonna explode. Do you want me to go back to the storage area to get the parts? We did open up that one crate. Maybe not yet. From the picture on the monitor, it looked like a bunch of little discs. Yeah, oh. Turn the ASC, remove wing. And then the thruster parts. There's a bunch of rings and then the a little cylinder here. Now where can I find that? Oh, maybe did I have to touch that first and come back here? No. Well, it's gotta be around here somewhere. Are we just gonna blindly look around like this though? That doesn't seem right either. Growth chart. When Kathy Johansson was brought to the moon, Dr. Rosa Laverde was immediately taken with a girl's vivid imagination. Determined to limit the impairing effects of the moon's low gravity on her new friend's physique, Rosa closely monitored Kathy's health and growth rate. Despite Rosa's good care, Kathy's health deteriorated rapidly during her stay on the moon. Mm. She's very young, right? But her height hasn't really changed. Even though she was here for like five years. Not good. They never sent her back to Earth though, as far as we know. She went missing alongside her dad. Where the heck are those discs? Could they be upstairs? Not much here. That's where he came from. Nothing in the vending machine. Nothing? 
That seems kind of deliberate, too. If everybody was leaving in a hurry, then there should be something in there. Green space, lunar space food industries. New tech personnel arriving soon. Bunch of names. Do we recognize anybody? I don't think so. Hmm. Not right now anyway. Oh, but towards the bottom there. Bianca, Hank, Paula, same family. Okay. Did they ever arrive? We don't know yet. Oh! Here we go. It wasn't Isaac's room after all. Oh? You're still my center of gravity. Much love, Liz. Mom. 37 to 47. Yum. He seems very research-oriented, but he still loved his family. He kept all their stuff on his table. Okay. D do we know how to do this? Oh. No? Oh, again, we gotta mash the little holes and stuff. Hmm. Maybe not this one yet? How about... One with two holes, or three holes? Actually, I'm guessing they probably want me to look at the screen first. Like, if we look here... It's the cylinder, and then the thinnest slice, and then they get thicker and thicker? Except for the last one. So the cylinder first. Uh, how do I... How do I get you to turn? Here. There we go. And then the thin slice. Like that? No? Well, it's not the slice then. Okay. Another one? Maybe this one? No, the color. I should be looking at the color, right? It's not even blue. Yeah, because earlier when we put down the cylinder, that was blue. Or do I have to make it blue myself? Yeah, this one is blue. But I must not have done it right. Here we go. Mmm, the little teeth needed to be on top. After that, it's the second thickest slice. Which I guess would be... This one? No. This one. Other way? There you go. And then... One with a lot of little slices in between. This one? Other way? Good. No. Here we go. <laughs> I kind of like this mini-game. All the little mini-games in this make me feel like I'm actually doing something. Like I'm contributing to the cause. <laughs> there you go. ASU thruster replacement successful. Initiate reboot to complete maintenance protocol. Okay. We didn't need that crate, after all? Oh, 
nuclear lockdown in effect. Oh no. What? No. Oh, are you alive, buddy? You are. At least we won't be so lonely anymore. Do you speak? No? But you emote? That's good enough for me. 